Hello friends, welcome back to more Reddit stories about entitled people, crazy people, and everything in between. Hope you're all doing wonderful, be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and we're getting right into today's Reddit posts. Simple requests for ID escalates to cops being called in harassment. I work at a hotel. A guest had a reservation so I asked for the usual ID and credit card. Come on, I've stayed here several times before. He has. Why are you asking for my ID? I've got to ask for ID from everyone each time they check in, I said. But you know me. Doesn't matter, I still need it. Internally thinking, the day you graced my hotel with your presence was the most important day of your life, but for me it was Tuesday. He angrily pulls out his ID and so I ask for his credit card. But I paid for it already. This is disrespectful. It hasn't been paid for yet, which is why I need your card. Or I can cancel the reservation because you've been nothing but disrespectful towards me. Fine, I'm sorry. How much? X dollars plus $100 deposit. He hands me $120 in cash. And I say, sorry, I need X dollars plus $100 deposit. He hands me another $20 bill, which still doesn't cover the full amount. You're still short, and I feel like you're continuing to be disrespectful. Here's your money back. You can no longer stay here tonight. That's when the threats come out. He threatens me that he knows the owner, but wants me to call them. Threatens me that if I cancel his reservation, I'm gonna lose my job. I feel confident I won't. I already texted her my side of the situation. I reiterate that he needs to leave, and if he refuses, I will call the cops. Fine, call the cops, he says. I call the cops, and he's still arguing with me while I'm trying to talk to dispatch. The police arrive 15 minutes later to get statements. He argues with me and the officer some more. Officer tries to get him to calm down, saying it's not worth it to escalate. Last I hear, he left the premises in the back of the police car. But 20 minutes later, he started calling the hotel, again threatening me that I'm gonna lose my job. He has called three times so far. I called the non-emergency back just to have it documented he started harassing me. And all this over a simple ID request. Some people just love to dig their own grave. I'm actually genuinely curious what's going on in their heads during these situations. Did he really not comprehend that OP is simply just following policy? And did he think that if he just continued to throw a tantrum, it would somehow magically work out in his favor? And the cop would say, oh yeah, you know what, you're right. Let me just get this hotel worker to break the rules for you because you're so important. How to get fired by your hairdresser. So my amazing, beautiful, super cool mother-in-law owns a high-end hair salon and is a very popular and well-respected hairdresser in our large tourist city. As everyone knows, the pandemic was particularly hard on many businesses and especially in the way salons operate in general. When they were finally able to open again for the first time, wearing a mask was the law. Salons that did not follow this law were actively being fined and or closed. On top of that, my husband was diagnosed with a rare form of lymphoma around that time, which makes him extremely vulnerable to any and all colds, flus, and infections. This is where the real trouble started. Mother-in-law had a longtime client named Janet, but she absolutely refused to put on a mask. My mother-in-law explained to Janet that she had to wear one because it is the law, and she could be fined far more than her styling costs. Janet doubled down, ranting about her rights as an American, blah blah blah, Mother-in-law pushed back again with the law and the fines. Still, Janet remained unmoved. Mother-in-law now got as serious as a mom can get. She explained once again that her son has cancer. Janet rolls her eyes. Yeah, I know. I read it on Facebook. Then you understand that if I get sick, I can't see my son or it could kill him. So what? Isn't he terminal anyway? Pause for shock while everyone in the salon just freezes for a second. Mother-in-law backs away from the chair. You need to leave. Janet with the shocked Pikachu face. What? Why? Hairdresser number two says, Get out. Get out now. Get out before I call the police. And that is how you get fired from your very expensive hairdresser. How anyone can think their freaking bleach blonde hairdo is more important than the hairdresser's child is beyond me. You know that woman has scissors in her hand, right? Little note about Hub's cancer. Yes, at the time his diagnosis was terminal, but thanks to advances in science, he is now living with cancer instead of dying from it. However, he is still quite vulnerable to germs and viruses because it's lymphoma. No, I'm not a student. 
I work here. Classic young teacher at a high school story. When I was 25 to 26 or so, it was during the testing season, March to June, where on any given day we are cycling in and out of testing rooms to proctor. So I get to my testing room, go to sign in on the log, and a teacher I didn't know runs over to me screaming to get away from the paperwork and would not let me get a word in edgewise about how I needed to sign in because I was proctoring. I held up my teacher ID around my neck trying to show her, but she just kept yelling, while kids around us were testing, I might add. It took me a minute to realize she thought I was a kid, and I told her I work here. Then her demeanor immediately changed, and she was like, oh, okay, and never apologized. Another time, much funnier, I was running to my car during lunch to get something, and as I was coming back into the school, one of the security people at the school was walking out, so I didn't get the chance to need my key. He did his job and was like, what are you doing? So I told him I was just getting something out of my car and going back in. He asked what class I was supposed to be in, and I told him I was on planning. He then laughed and told me, oh, I thought you were a kid. You should have told me to just f off because you work here. I did also have an admin get very mad at me for referring to her by her first name, like every other teacher at the school did, and that scarred me for years, afraid to refer to any other faculty member over 50 by their first name. The time Karen almost shot me point blank at the gun range. When I was taking my concealed carry course at my local range, it finally came time to go and qualify. The class is a joke, the range requirement is a joke as well. 7 out of 10 shots with the human silhouette at 21 feet, a blind person could qualify. And given that there were 5 lanes and 15 shooters, there were 3 groups of 5. I, having been shooting all my life and knowing I would easily pass, voluntarily went to the back of the line to let people who didn't have a clue what they were doing get the attention and supervision from the RSOs they needed very badly. But when I was up next, Karen, who fired from the hip using some cheap Taurus revolver, aiming only with the laser, I kid you not, arms and hands at belt level, couldn't work up the finger strength to fire double action, and turned around calling for the teacher to help her. But lo and behold, the gun turned with her, and now there's a 38 pointed straight at me, 5 feet away, indoor range, with the person behind it not knowing what they were doing. So I acted on impulse and dove sideways full bore out of the way, but she got startled and flinched. What do you know? There is suddenly a brand new hole in the wall, right where my heart was about half a second earlier. I scream cease fire loud enough for the next zip code to hear me, and even though the RSO is making a beeline towards her, I get up seeing red and beat them to it. I grab this revolver, unload it, and throw it down range. I am a very nice guy, but because of what has happened, I start yelling. I screamed everything from what did you not understand about keeping it pointed down range, to keep your finger off the goddamn mother trigger for about a good two minutes. Adrenaline is a hell of a thing to be on, I guess. Then the RSO proceeds to tell me to go talk to the owner of the range. Small operation. So now I'm in the office watching the CCTV footage with the owner, and not five minutes later, Karen storms into the office, pissed as hell. I kid you not, the gist of her complaint was that I had no reason to be mad and yell at her, because I didn't work at the range and that was solely the RSO's job, not mine and everyone else's to promote safety when you see the need to. She had the audacity to tell me and the owner that it was my fault for startling her by moving my ass out of the way of a loaded gun pointed right at me as fast as I could, that even though her finger was obviously on the trigger that she wasn't going to shoot me because, quote, I don't make mistakes like that easily. She was also demanding that I pay her at least a thousand dollars to replace the pistol, which was only worth around 350, because I chucked it down range and quote likely broke it. The owner wasn't even mad, he was impressed at how stupid and reckless Karen was and simply said calmly, you are extremely lucky that you were getting yelled at by him instead of being talked to by a judge in about a month. You need to leave here and never come back, it's best for everyone. Karen sticks to her guns and the cops eventually come and escort her off the property. I ended up getting a hell of a show watching Karen and the owner and then the cops go to war with each other for a good 30 minutes. But seriously, F you Karen. Hand over all my tasks so you can get rid of me? Okay. A few years back I was the IT contracts and supplier manager at a large company. 
been there 25 plus years and had a lot of corporate knowledge, having worked in multiple roles over that time. Also was very well paid due to length of tenure and experience at the company. A new a-hole boss gets hired and proceeds to get rid of people he doesn't like and hires his buddies into various roles. The workplace culture took a nosedive pretty quickly. I knew my time was limited as I wasn't in his inner circle. Seeing the writing on the wall I started looking for and applying for other roles. The a-hole boss gets me in their sights and decides to get rid of me, looking to move one of his recently hired buddies to my specialized role. He doesn't even understand what I do, needing a lot of technical knowledge combined with contract and legal. He tells me he wants to move me to an upcoming project and finish off what I am currently working on and not take on any new work. Through all my contracts across the company I knew there was no new project or even significant budget for one, but I'll do what I'm told. I wrap up my work and tell him I'm ready for the project. He says sit tight, it's not far away, and don't start anything else. So I sit at my desk applying for other jobs and waiting. One of the jobs I applied for comes through and I get an offer on Friday morning. That same afternoon, the a-hole boss comes around and says, the project isn't happening and as you have nothing else on your plate, we will have to let you go. Yahtzee. I know there is heaps of work backed up and crap is going to hit the fans soon when contracts aren't renewed, services canceled, etc. I also knew my employment contract and they will have to pay a generous redundancy. Because the boss told HR my role isn't required anymore. I say okay, I guess you will have to pay me a redundancy too. Sure, he says, not knowing what he has agreed to. So I go through the redundancy process and at the same time accept the offer of the new job. Come my last day, I happily accept the 200k payout. His face goes pale when he hears of the amount because it comes out of the team's budget. I walk out the door and into the new job the day after. Love my new job. Less stress, great culture, a great team. Wish I'd left earlier. But then I wouldn't have got the payout if I resigned. Four weeks later I hear the crap is hitting the fan and they advertise for a new person for my old role as no one knows what to do because apparently my job was quote easy. He didn't even ask me to document what I did to hand over to anyone else. Alright guys, that's gonna be all for today. Thank you for watching. Be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more reddit shenanigans. Stay awesome, have a nice day, and I'll see you all next time.